Hello, welcome to another video. When you're dealing with polar curves, you want to know what the definition of x is in terms of r and theta and what y is in terms of y and theta, x, I mean r and theta. Once you know those two things, I think you can answer any question on it. You are given a polar curve and you're asked to find the slope of the tangent at a given point. Once you're given the point, your life is a lot easier because you don't have to do so much simplification. My recommendation is to write down the most important ingredients which will show up in every calculation that you do. And once you do that, evaluate at that point, then go plug in at the end and your life will be a lot easier. So what are the most important things you want to write out? Let me make a list of them and then I'll show you how to solve them. first thing you want to write is that your theta is equal to pi over 3. The next thing you want to write immediately after that is what will be the value of cosine theta. Okay, the value of cosine theta is the same thing as cosine pi over 3. And what's that? Well, we know this is going to be 1 half. So these are things you already know. We also want to know what sine theta will be at that point, which is going to be the sine of pi over 3, which is going to be rad 3 over 2. So make sure you have these already figured out before you even start doing anything, as long as you know what the point is, okay, or what the angle is. What else do you need to know? You need to know, oh, you need to know what this is actually. So what is r if I evaluate it at pi over 3? Okay, this is going to be equal to 1 plus 2 times the cosine of pi over 3. Cosine of pi over 3. Well, I already know what, you see why you should do this first? I already know what the cosine of pi over 3 is, and that means that I can say 1 plus, this is equal to 1 plus 2 times 1 half. 2 times 1 half, which is 1 plus 1 which is equal to 2. So now I know what r is at pi over 3. So basically, these are the most important things you can immediately compute as soon as you get the question. These are the most important things. You want to know theta, sine theta, cosine theta, and r. So let's go start doing some differentiation. Now, what is r prime? r prime is the derivative of this expression, which will be dr d theta. So let me write it out first. Remember, in polar equations or for polar curves, the independent variable is theta, nothing else. Any differentiation you do must be with respect to theta. If you find something else there, you have to differentiate everything with respect to theta. So here, this is the dependent variable, this is the independent variable, so it's dr d theta. So this is dr d theta, which is going to now be, if we differentiate this with respect to theta, this goes to zero, and this becomes two times, the derivative of cosine is negative sine, so it's negative sine theta. So it's going to be uh, zero minus two sine theta, which is just negative sine theta. Okay, that's it. Now, don't stop here. As soon as you get r prime, you want to evaluate it again. Remember, we know what sine theta is. It's going to be square root of 3 over 2. Why don't you evaluate it? r prime evaluated at pi over 3 will be equal to negative 2 times sine pi over 3, which is rad 3 over 2, which is going to be negative square root of 3. And you're done. What else do we need? That's it. So once you have all of this ready, Let's go find the slope. Remember, the slope is dy dx. <sighs> Remember? But dy dx is only computed by writing dy d theta over dx d theta. So all you need now is know what dy d theta is, know what dx d theta is, and you can plug them in here. Whatever you get is your answer. Okay, now let's go find dy d theta. Well, how do we know? We know that y, okay, part of the things you want to know before you start is that y is defined as r sine theta, 
and x is defined as r cosine theta. Well, these are the, this is actually the, the main idea of conversion between um, rectangular curves to polar curves, okay? What we used to are rectangular curves because you deal with x and y, but then you go to the, the polar curves, we're dealing with r and theta. So in the, at this point, we need to differentiate this. We need to find dy d theta. So now looking at this, r is a function of theta, sine theta is a function of theta, y now depends on theta in a chain. So this is a product of two functions. You have to apply the product rule, okay? So the product rule applies here, the product rule applies here. So let's see. If we have y, let's um, have this this way. So if we have a y to be equal to r sine theta, we're gonna apply the product rule to get y prime, dy d theta is, applying the product rule, we differentiate the first, keep the second. We differentiate the first, we keep the second. Plus, we keep the first, we differentiate the second. If we differentiate sine theta, we get cosine theta. And we're done. As soon as you get a value, don't leave it this way. Evaluate at the given point, at theta. So, if we find dy d theta, if we evaluate it at the point pi over three, it's gonna be the value of this at pi over three, which we already obtained. It's gonna be this. It's gonna be negative square root of three times, what is sine pi over three? Sine theta is square root of three over two. This makes your life a lot easier because you see the final answer is just in one step. And plus, what is R? R is, we obtained R somewhere, it's two. And what is cosine theta? We said it was one half, times one half. As you can see, if you multiply this by this, you're gonna get square root of three. So this is negative root three over, no, negative three over two plus one, which is <laughs> negative three over two plus one. And what does that give us? The answer to this is, one, negative one half. This is negative one over two. Okay, we're done. We do the same thing for sine. We're gonna say x is equal to, remember this is where we're coming, our answer is gonna be this over this. We just found dy d theta to be negative one half. So, let's put a box here in the middle because that's where the answer is coming. This is negative one over two divided by, whatever we get in the next one, we we'll just divide and that will be our answer. Let's go. So here we're gonna have negative one over two and then if we do the same thing here, um, x by definition is r cosine theta. Okay, so what is dx d theta? Apply the product rule again, differentiate the first, keep the second, so it's r prime cosine theta, and then plus, keep the first, differentiate the second, but when you differentiate cosine theta, you get minus sine theta, so I'm gonna change this sign to minus, and then I'm gonna write sine theta. Okay, I already know all of these values. What is R prime? Again, it's negative square root of three, negative square root of three. What is cosine theta? One half, that's times one over two, Minus, what is r? r is two. And what is sine theta? Sine theta is square root of three over two. Okay. What do we have there? We have negative rad three over two, negative rad three over two. And if you do this, you're gonna get negative rad three over one. Okay, if we clean this up, what do we get? So this is equal to negative three rad three over two. And that's what I'm gonna plug in here negative three, rad three, divided by two. And how do you clean this up? Well, this is easy to clean up because <laughs> we can actually say that dy dx, if I clean this up, is equal to negative one over two, divided by this, which is the same thing as multiplied by two over negative three, rad three. Well, the twos will cancel out, the minuses will cancel out, and you have one over three, Right, three. So that's the answer I would write here if um, this kind of expression is allowed. Otherwise, you can rationalize it. And rationalizing, 
rationalizing. What do you get? You get 1 over 3 rad 3 times 3 rad 3 over 3 rad 3. And just look at that. That's going to be 3 rad 3 over. This is 9 times 3, which is 27, which gives you rad 3 divided by 9. That's what I'm going to write here, rad 3 over 9. And that is the slope of the tangent line to this curve at the point at the angle theta equals pi over 3. I hope this was um, a good source of exercise for you and you learned something. Never stop learning because those who stop learning have stopped living. Bye-bye.